Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today we have a short one on the channel, and that is a video that actually Sean Baker posted. He does this little thing where he'll duet a video with someone else that's speaking a bunch of tripe and a bunch of nonsense. We're going to be reacting to the person that he duetted with, but I can't find the original video, so we're just going to go ahead and watch his video. And with that being said, let's just jump right into this. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet, as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product in any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule Company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. When it comes to gut health, they've got it completely wrong. Who does? If you're referring to carnivores, no we don't. You've got it completely wrong. You look like an MD, given your scrub shirt. And MDs are typically physicians, and physicians know f all. So let's go ahead and let's just see what you have to say. As a medical gastroenterologist, I cannot- There, there we go. <laughs> Eve, the people are now promoting the carnivore diet as- Okay, well, just because your incredulity is possessing you, and you are incredulous, doesn't mean it's false. It doesn't mean it's contraindicated to any degree. You're within the medical sphere, so you know what contraindicated means, don't you? You should. So, yeah, it's not, actually. It's our species-appropriate, species-specific diet for our species. And for basically every other species that preceded our current speciation for four and a half million years. So- Good diet for gut health. I mean- uh, It's the best diet for our species if done properly and is properly tenured and properly fortified and properly and responsibly transitioned to over the course of six to eight weeks. Do not do it overnight. Particularly for gut reasons, actually. It makes no sense. We've known for decades. No, it makes total sense when you look at stable nitrogen and carbon isotope analyses that show unequivocally that we are hypercarnivores, more carnivorous than those of lions, hyenas, wolves, and foxes. It's that high meat consumption is an independent risk factor for most- No, not risk factor. There are no studies to inform upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been and there never will be. Get the word risk out of your vocabulary. That is a meretricious term in order to manipulate people and scare people because fear allows you to control them better. Stop it. Anytime you hear the word risk, even with respect to plant consumption increasing your risk of this and that, plants being something that I'm against, there are no studies to inform upon that. And I will never pretend that there are because it's false. Gastrointestinal problems. Gastro no. In fact, actually, there's been one study, one study that was conducted in 2012 that was even sort of scientific, N of 75, N of 41 in the group that we're going to talk about right now, in which 75 people presented with idiopathic constipation. Idiopathic meaning they don't know what the cause is. They were split into three groups. One group maintained their fiber intake. Another group slightly reduced it. And another group, the one with 41 participants, completely eliminated all fiber from their diet. And after the study was conducted, all 41 participants had a complete amelioration of all symptoms of constipation, including blocking, but also anal bleeding and bloating, having a bowel movement of once per day. The group that maintained their fiber intake had a bowel motion of once per 6.83 days and had no amelioration of their constipation whatsoever. There are only two associative factors when it comes to diverticulosis, which is an outpouching or breaking down of the distal colon, which leads to infection and early death if left untreated, it trends towards diverticulitis, which is increased number of bowel motions per day and increased fiber intake. There's a reason why diverticulosis patients are told to go on a low residue diet protocol. Low residue is just once again a fancy meretricious term, meaning low fiber. Ask anyone with a colon colonostomy bag, what gets stuck in their colonostomy bag? If it's meat and fat or if it's plant material, particularly fiber, sir, f right off with your unscientific demagogic bullshit. Reflux disease, fatty liver disease. If no, not fatty liver disease. Not fatty liver disease. Once again, with the risk, gastroesophageal reflux is actually due to low stomach acidity, not high stomach acidity. You don't. If you knew anything about the gut at all, you would know that. And what is the most auspicious approach to achieving low stomach acidity within the stomach? Eroding and degrading the stomach perniciously over time. And what's the best way to do that? Eat f***ing plants. Bowel disease, diverticular disease. No, IBS is not caused by meat. Ask anybody that has gone on a carnivorous diet. The only digestive problems they may have initially are with respect to the consistency of their stool, not the ability for it to pass and not their ability for them to digest their f***ing food. Once again, stay in your lane, you errant f Colon cancer, to name a few. We understand- No, not colon cancer. 
Why is it that red meat consumption in between the span of time between 1976 to 1980 decreased by over 18% and has been steadily declining ever since, but the rates of colon cancer, particularly in younger Americans, particularly colon cancer in particularly younger Americans and young adults, is markedly increasing? Mechanisms. We know that the- No, you don't understand the mechanisms because there are no mechanisms as to how that causes IBS and all of those other manifestations of illness and ailments that you just enumerated. Protein, the heterocyclic amines, the polycyclic- Oh my god. No, you know what? Sean has a right to speed this up. Once again, you are using terms that other people do not understand that are more sophisticated, and you're flaunting your degree and your occupation in order to once again aggrandize yourself in the perception of other people so that you can exploit other people's ignorance and they'll listen to you, or they have a higher inclination or propensity or proclivity to listen to you. That's what manipulators do, and that's also what psychopaths do. Not to say you're a psychopath, sir, but probably don't want to mimic their behavior, do you? Aromatic hydrocarbons and more cause damage to the gut, increasing- Okay, what causes damage to the gut is f***ing fiber. Fiber is abrasive to the enteric nervous system. It increases mucus secretion because it increases immune dysregulation. It's largely composed of cellulose, which is a large component of trees and tree bark. It's indigestible. Now, last I checked, if you can't digest something, you shouldn't f***ing be eating it. It ferments into nasty byproducts, like aldehydes, which even in vastly small concentrations, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, in high enough concentrations, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. It also prevents into gluconeogenic precursors, particularly lactate and acetate. So therefore, leading indirectly to an elevated glycemic status, potentially. Definitely does ferment into those products, though. It reduces nutrient absorption. It interferes with nutrient absorption. I can go on and on about fiber, and I have before on this channel. Binge my videos or buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that are perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. Tempting for that to be out by March 1st of this year. So please, if it's already out by the time this video is out, please buy it. If you're in this space, you're almost definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water. So I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water. Water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below. Oxidative stress, inflammation. Oxidative stress. What is oxidative stress? Once again, an informal term. What the f*** is that? If we're being colloquial and informal, plant foods do the exact same thing to a greater degree. And meat really doesn't do that, unless you vastly char the meat. You were talking about hydrocarbons or is it polycyclic, I mean, whatever. That's if you char meat heavily. Inflammation? No. The studies that you're citing, which you're not citing any, but the ones that you're referring to or alluding to, did they look at red meat consumption in the context of a low-carbohydrate diet or a no-carbohydrate diet? But they didn't. How long did the study go on for? What was the sample size and therefore the statistical power? <laughs> what was the randomization like? Oh, do you actually know how to perform research? Do you know how to employ research methods and interpret statistics? No, you f***ing know. Function. The perfect recipe for poor gut health. Nope, not the perfect recipe. Not the perfect recipe at all. You are a moron, and it shows. Get a grip. Go back to work. The effects on the gut microbiome. If you're eating... There's no established effects of any externality, human nutrition-wise, as it relates to any heart health outcome, including gut microbiome. There is not. There are vapid associative studies, jejune, superficial, facile epidemiological studies and associations that show that people in certain healthier populations, ostensibly healthier because they live longer, present with certain microbiota as opposed to other unhealthy ones that die early. Let me ask you something, sir. Does your alarm clock go off in the morning because the sun rose? It's an association. There are a myriad of confounders. Exclusive diet, you are pushing your microbiome into proteolytic fermentation. The what does that mean? Why don't you actually explain it and elucidate it for your viewers? See, that's actually something I do, in fact, do. If you read my book, I do it much better. I just don't have a lot of time in my videos. But even then, even in my videos, I'll explain it. Okay, you gotta be transparent. Biotic substances produced by this meat-fueled gut have negative impacts on gut health. No, impact is a cause and effect word. There are no studies to inform upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. Already covered that. Rewind the video and I've said exactly that word for word. Independent risk factor for most- No, not risk factor. There are no studies to inform upon the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process as it relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been and there never will be. 
Also, the postbiotics, there's one in particular, TMAO, that they'll always tout, or TMA, which then is transmuted into TMAO in the bloodstream, whatever, and it's supposedly proatherogenic. That was proven false very patently. Your gut microbiome adjusts to the diet that you were on appropriately as long as you transition to that diet sensibly. So therefore, you won't have any potential proatherogenic compounds being produced as a result of the fermentation of certain compounds in the food that you're eating. Overall health. But the carnivore... No, not overall health. Bye. Bye, shoe. We don't want to hear you anymore. You don't know what you're talking about. You're pontificating tripe. Tripe nonsense. Ignore all of this. They're not No, what happens is we assess it first, and then we realize that it's okay to ignore. We don't just outright ignore it because it doesn't align with our ideology and conform to it. That's what you guys do. In fact, if you ever came across this video, you wouldn't watch it in full. And even if you did, you wouldn't believe what I was saying. Too much work. In science, I suspect the main reason they're promoting this is nothing to do with your gut health or your overall health. It's simply because they have this ethos, this belief system that you've got to eat lots of meat to be really healthy. They don't really you don't have to eat lots of meat. You should eat meat until satiety. And also that doesn't ensure health. It depends on your current biodiversity and your current metabolic situation. It is not a guarantee, but it is the most auspicious, propitious approach to achieving a salubrious physiological environment within one's body. Necessarily, as it is our species appropriate, species specific diet. Intrinsically, as being our species appropriate, species specific diet. Every single animal on the face of the planet has a species appropriate species specific diet. We are no different from that. The only difference that we have with respect to being a human being that differs and that makes us different from other animals on the face of the planet is one reason in particular, and that is our ability to reason. Everything else that you think of as different from other animals is subsidiary and ancillary to our ability to reason, such as language and our ability to communicate. That's due to our ability to reason. All of it. The way in which we eat is no different than other animals. So false. It is not just an ethos. It is a judicious inference and an astute one at that. Okay, help. They just want to eat lots of meat. No, they do want to become healthy. Go back to work. Anyway, once again, I keep using this word tripe nonsense. Yeah, that is what we heard. Tripe. Bunch of tripe nonsense. But anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe, and please leave your comments below and tell me what you thought of the video. Also, most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon. I've got a $1 a month tier, a $5 a month tier, and an $8 a month tier in order to gain access to ad-free content, uncensored content, one week early uploads, one extra video per week, and unblurred pop-up references or citations on the screen. Also, buy my book that I referenced earlier, Contraindicated, when it's out, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that are perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. We're trying to get that out by March 1st, like like I said, by the hardcover, by the paperback, by the ebook, and or by the audiobook. Also, please refer to the link below on the screen. I haven't really been saying that recently. Please refer to the link below on the screen to buy Cerul products. It is something that is extremely beneficial, in my opinion, for anyone above the age of really 18 or 20. If you want more information on the products before you buy it, which I encourage you to actually do if you don't know about them, don't just buy it outright. Please refer to the link below in the description. I have a video that I made on them. I elucidated them and explained them in extensive detail, so please do so. You will not regret it. Also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, X, or Twitter. Email me at edgookie14 at gmail.com. Also linked in the description below for any questions that you may have that are very salient or important or pressing. And also, if you would like me to react to certain videos in particular, I do have this vast abditory of videos at my disposal right now, but eventually I won't. So that would be nice. And I will try to get those as fast as possible. But anyway, with that being said, I will see you next time when we critique someone else that does not know anything about, well, gut health or human physiology or human nutrition at all. So till then.